Good morning, welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Kurt, glad you're here today. A uh, couple announcements that I missed for the announcement video. If you have a graduate, uh, please let the office know so we can recognize them uh, for our May 16th Sunday. Also, the, the discipleship survey link is in your worship guide that you should have received by email or you have here in person. So. Other announcements are there. I trust you to read those, but just take note of that. Next week, we have a book study class that's going to be starting, if you're interested in that, the Gospel of Matthew. And then uh, we have some other classes going on. So that is all the announcements I have. Again, like I said, we're going to be talking about courage. And what do you need courage for? Where have you needed courage in the past? Where do you need courage today? As we start today, so far so good. It's going to launch us into some worship songs welcome welcome everybody we are so happy to have you here what a week we've had here in indiana with some amazing things that god has brought to us and then took away thankfully without anything on the roads permanently it was a beautiful time i hope not too many of your flowers were hurt we just praise jesus and we want you to stand up and join us in song as we all raise our voices to him together
And now join us as we sing Cornerstone. So today's scripture comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. Please join us for the reading of the word. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the highest priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who is lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. 
Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, and there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us all say, thanks be to God. God, you may be seated and the kids can come up at this time for a message for them. Right? I haven't checked that mic that it's working today because we haven't used it. Sorry. We'll find out. It'll be great fun. Is it working? Yes, it is. Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to talk about being courageous. That's what we're learning about in church today. How many of you guys think that you're courageous or brave? Does that make more sense if I say brave? Do you guys think you're brave and courageous? No, not very many of you? Oh my goodness. All right. Well, I bet you guys have seen some movies with lots of brave people in them, right? They're always doing super brave things to save the day. Have any of you ever seen Moana? Do we have any Moana fans? Yeah, I like Moana. Yeah, and she has to go out on the ocean. She's never even sailed a boat. She goes out all by herself to go save her island and her people, right? Yeah, she's really brave. So somebody else that was brave, though, was Jesus, right? A lot of people didn't like the things he was out doing and saying, but he kept going along and doing it. And that's something that we need to work on, too. Some people, for some reason, they don't like to talk about God. They don't like to talk about their, him to their friends and stuff. I'm sure some of you adults have heard they say that you shouldn't talk about those things with other people, right? But that's not what God wants, right? Does he want us to talk about that with other people? Yes, right? He wants us to tell everybody to spread his word to all, just like he was doing. So let's go ahead and bow our heads, but this week I want you guys to work on telling other people, okay? You guys can do that through prayer or reading your Bible or something like that with a friend, okay? You don't have a Bible? Well, we can get you one. I will make sure we get you a Bible today, okay? Um, All right. Diane Heath, who she and her family moved down here um, about a year ago. They found our church through our web presence and uh, have connected with us there. She is going to be baptized next service. She has asked uh, for you to pray for her. And whenever we do baptism, it is not just a uh, individual me and Jesus thing. It is a covenant that that individual is making with God you as a congregation, and that you are renewing your covenant of baptism as well. So here in a moment, I will invite you to remember your baptism and be thankful. Whenever I do that, uh, I inevitably, after a worship service, will have somebody say, I was baptized as an infant. I don't remember that. Anybody in here baptized as an infant? Any of you remember that? And what I tell people is, remember, have you ever seen an infant be baptized? Have you ever seen anybody else be baptized? Know then that somebody loved you and made that promise on your behalf and you can remember, put back together that. You were loved and held and brought to God from an early age with the hope that you would never know anything else but God. That's a good gift, isn't it? So as we come now, I'm going to invite you to participate in the liturgy because you have a responsibility in this for Diane and for yourselves. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Did you hear that? All of this is God's gift offered without price. Baptism is about what God does, not what we do. Amen? 
Grace is like this gift that God gives and it's like, oh, let me pay you for it. It doesn't work that way. God's gift offered without price. This morning I'm presenting Diane Heath for baptism. Next service, I will ask her all of the questions we ask people as they prepare themselves and they make those promises. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of, ev- of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ? as your savior put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your lord in union with the church christ is open to people of all ages nations and races so i ask you to remember that is your covenant as well that is your promise as well i will then ask according to the grace given you will you be faithful a faithful member of Christ's holy church, serve as Christ's representative in the world. Then I will talk to the church. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, answer, we do. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include Diane, who is now before you in your care? Just a second, you got more than just we do. <laughs> but I appreciate the, yes, we do. All right. Way to go, Corey. That was awesome. All right. Would you join me? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. So, you've made a covenant. I'm going to invite you to join me together as we proclaim the faith that we have in God as contained in the scriptures of Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. As we celebrate baptism, For Diane, I invite you all to remember your baptism. To remember that once upon a time, you went under the water. God, in the fullness of time, created the world, called order out of the chaos of the waters. God delivered Noah and his family through the floods of God, brought the people Israel from slavery into freedom in the Exodus through the waters of the Red Sea. God brought them into the promised land, waters of the Jordan. All of us were nurtured in our mother's womb. Water is a symbol, and baptism is a symbol, outward and visible, of an inward and spiritual grace that you belong to God. You belong to God, and you're never alone. Let's pray. God, by the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, through your Spirit, bless these waters. And Diane, as she receives them, 
May this be for her a holy and living sacrament of your holy presence in her life. And as you bless these waters, Lord, bless all of us here today who pray with her that these waters might be for us a reminder of our baptism. In your mercy, O Lord, anoint these waters, this symbol of your grace, freely given without price. Bless in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Diane, I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son. And I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. God, anoint my sister Diane and help her to live a life of faith and joy in your name, by your spirit, through your son. All God's people said, amen. amen. Church, would you please welcome your new sister into the family of our Thank faith. You. Thank you. We're going to pray for you. Would you all pray with me? Through baptism, you are incorporated into the Holy Spirit, into God's new creation, and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you together as members of the family of Christ. Thank you so much. God bless you. All righty. As so thank you for being here. Thank you for being with your mom. God bless y'all. Hmm. One of the beauties of of this season is people have said, you know what, I want to do this. I want to be I want to take part in something important for me. In the scripture this morning, the disciples if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to Acts chapter 4. Thank you, Bambi, for reading. You did a great job. That was awesome. Um, in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John, they had just healed this man who was lame for his whole life, 40 years. Good deed. Uh, what's the phrase? No good deed goes unpunished, right? And so they got arrested for it because that's what we do. And... Um, as they're standing here in front of the, the high priest and the Sanhedrin, the, the Jewish leaders, religious court, uh, they're standing in front of this group of people who had the power to have them executed. And they knew this because they had just given that authority and power in executing Jesus. They had enacted it. And so... <laughs> They're standing here because they did something good, and now they, they're facing consequences for doing that. With people who have just killed their friend some 60 days earlier. How would you respond if you were in that situation? I mean, would you be like, let me tell you what's what? Or would you be like, oh, sorry, sir, I didn't mean to upset you. How would you live? The disciples, they decided they were going to speak truth to power. And they said, if we are here because we did something good, pff, let's tell you why we did it. We did it in the name of Jesus, whom you crucified. He is the only one you can have salvation through. So come on. And at that moment, they had a plethora of options of things they could have done. What they ended up doing in the verses that followed what baby read is they, they took note that these men were unschooled. They took note that Peter, at least they knew had denied him because he was in the high priest's front yard the night Jesus was arrested. But they said, oh my gosh, these men have been with Jesus. 
and there's something different about them now. Eventually, they tell the disciples to stop preaching, and, and Peter says, you tell us what the right thing to do is. Should we do what God wants or what you want? You want us to stop. We're going to do what God wants us to do. Now, I asked you earlier to think about what you need courage for. For the disciples, it took courage for them to stand up, didn't it? It took courage for them to speak out, but they did. What do you need courage for in your life today? What do you need courage for in your life today? To have the fullest life that God has for you. What do you need courage for today? As we come to a time of prayer, I invite you to think about not only those people who are listed in the worship guide who are in need of prayer, but to pray also for yourself, for what you need courage for to have the best life possible today. Courage requires vulnerability. Because you can't have uh, my wife will tell you I don't often ask for help I am far more comfortable reminded me yesterday in uh, helping other people and it is outside of my comfort zone to ask for help I do ask for prayers for me. I have some tests tomorrow. I'm having some health issues. And honestly, right now, uh, I'm not feeling all that great. I'm exhausted um, and in pain. And so I'd ask you to pray for me that those tests, that they figure out why my hand isn't working the way it should. um, And the other tests that I have to go through. Because the last time I went through a battery of medical tests, uh, it was a year and a half, and I got no answers. And I'll just say, that annoyed me. So as you pray, if you would pray that uh, those tests, that they figure something out, and quickly would be like, even better. Um, For me, it takes courage to ask you to pray. But I tell you over and over again, if you need anything, please, please don't hesitate to ask. If I'm not willing to do what I ask you to do, I'm not much of a leader, am I? And so do please pray for me. For the others who are listed, for other people. And before we stand up and sing, actually, I'm going to have you stand up, but I want you to look around. So go ahead and stand up. Look around, make eye contact with somebody, and I want you to say, repeat after me, be encouraged. encouraged. You're not alone. alone. Now make eye contact with somebody else and say, be encouraged. encouraged. You're not alone. alone. One, two more times, and for those of you who are online, feel free to type it in the chat bar. Be encouraged. encouraged. You're not alone. And say it one more time really loud so that I can hear you. Be encouraged. You're not alone. All right. For those of you online, if you want to shout it out, just use caps. All right. Please go ahead and lead us as we come to our prayer time. Please join us in singing this great old, old hymn. Oh, Lord, my God.
embrace us through all seasons. You walk with us all the time. Your love is great. Thank you, God, that you have come to us, that you have invited us to return to you and to join you in your great mission of saving the world. Thank you for Diane saying, yes, I want to be a part of that. Thank you for her family supporting her. Thank you for your church saying, we are a part of you. You are a part of us. We're in it together. Thank you, God, that your great grace overcomes everything and you give us the courage to live life fully. Father, there are some of us here today who are struggling to live life fully because sickness has gotten in the way. Pain has gotten in the way. Brokenness has gotten in the way. And so, God, you who are the healer of all broken and sick bodies, come, Lord Jesus, come and anoint us and bring your healing to all who need that healing today. Use us as your followers to walk with those who are broken and restore them to life. Father, there are those of us here who are grieving. So we ask you, God, to encourage their hearts through the comfort of your spirit. Let them know that they are not alone. And use us as your people to be the conduit of your mercy and your compassion. Father, for those who are lost, for those who are confused, God, bring clarity and discernment. Help them to have the courage to make the steps they need, even when they're not sure what those are. Have them, give them the courage to wait where they need to wait and use us as your people to walk alongside, to give wisdom and to give encouragement to lend our hearts where their heart is missing. Father, for those who are celebrating, join together with their spirit and lift them up and help them to rejoice fully. And use us as your people to walk alongside them and to help them remember these times. Help us all, God, to live life to the fullest as you have invited us. In your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When Christ shall come, we shall.
Before you sit down, look at somebody near you and say, God is good. All the time. Well, I had something different, actually. God is good. <laughs> and I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, go ahead and sit on down. As we continue worshiping God with the giving of our tithes and offerings, I want to let you know I have been encouraged by you as a congregation. By the way, you have supported and loved one another by the way that we have gone through the last year and a half. By the way that because you all have been diligent and worked hard, we've made it through with not a single COVID case coming from this place, not just from worship, but from early learning as well. It is abundantly clear that God has done some amazing things. And I thank God. I'm encouraged. I was speaking with somebody who lives in Florida and they had a family, a friend come down from, um, from Indiana to Florida. And, and that friend was just, they were so thankful to be in Florida where there's no restrictions and everything and anybody can do anything. And they said, you know, I couldn't even live my life in Indiana. And, and I, I said to my sister, sounds like your friend had a problem because some of us have figured out how to have life. My church has figured out how to live in the midst of this in spite of it. And we have chosen to overcome because we serve a God who is life. This hasn't taken us out. We have never been shut down. We have lived. Amen. So, God bless you. I won't share the rest of what I said, but... <laughs> Just saying. God bless. I'm encouraged because you all have said, we're going to figure it out. And we're going to live. And you all have. I'm encouraged. I'm also encouraged because Dan and Lisa Mayer are with us after being sick. So good to have you. I'm going to stop talking now. Um, as we continue worshiping, uh, it's offering time. God's doing good stuff. Let's say hallelujah because I'm... All right. <laughs>
Thank you. So far, so good. It is a good day to be here in God's house. Courage looks different in uh, all sorts of people. For some people, getting up and singing is courageous, right? It's not, not necessarily in your house. When, when you're a kid, getting back on the bike is courage, right? How many of y'all remember that? Yeah. Sometimes courage looks like uh, when, when you were younger, um, going and talking to somebody you'd never met. Sometimes that's what it looks like today <laughs> when you're older. Courage when, when you're in that early teen time could look like saying, I've got feelings for you. How many of you remember the first time you confessed undying love to somebody you didn't talk to after a while? Do you remember the feeling of your heart pounding like a dog scratching an itch inside your chest? You know? Courage looks different in different ages. And as you as you got older and you stood for your finals and and exams and then job interviews, all of those things it took courage to do. It does not take courage to just remain isolated. Courage is required if you are going to engage the world outside of you because the world outside of you might hurt you, right? It takes courage to get to know new people. It took courage for Diane to say, I am going to be baptized here and I'm going to be a part of this church because you might be weird. You are. And proud of it. But she had the courage to say, I want to be a part of this. It takes courage to say, I want to be a part of what Jesus is doing because Jesus will lead you to people who will inevitably disappoint you and possibly hurt you because people sometimes are mean. Yes, they are. Sometimes people are just stupid. And let's be honest, sometimes the stupid people's me. Just going to say it. It takes courage, though, to, to get outside of my cloistered self, to choose to engage other people. It took courage for Peter and John to stand up and speak truth to power and invite them to faith in Christ. Courage is required if we're going to live life the way God wants us to live it, which is free. Courage is required. It's not easy. I asked you earlier, what do you need courage for? Did y'all come up with something? I don't need to hear it. I just want to make sure you came up with something. If you didn't, I'm going to give you a little longer. You got it? What is courage requiring you today? <coughs> All of us are going through different stuff. All of us are going through different stuff. But God has invited us to life. Not life after that stuff. Not life once we're done with those things. But life in the midst of all that stuff. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is the presence of fear and living life anyway. I'm, I'm not asking you to... Uh, to ditch those things and to ignore them, pretend I'm asking you to dive right into them and trust that God goes with you and to know that God is with you. That is what baptism is about. And I'm so glad, Diane, you got baptized today so that you could help everybody to remember their baptism and be thankful that God is with us in it no matter what it is. You are not alone. God is with you. And not only that, in covenant, we are in this together. We are not alone. God has called us to live courageously. That's what baptism is about. I, I choose to follow God, to live God's way and no other, to, to live to, to turn away from fear and to embrace courage, to, to turn away from hatred and embrace love, to turn away from fear and, and anger and rage and embrace gentleness, 
kindness. To live courageously. Because that's what's required today. The world the disciples lived in needed a little bit of change because it wasn't the best reflection of God's world. Does our world today need a little bit of change? What do you think? The people who change the world are those who are courageous, who choose to engage the problems they see instead of saying, ain't it awful? For 25 years of ministry, I've heard good Christian folks say, oh my gosh, look at the world, ain't it awful? And I've said, what are you going to do about it? Because just saying, ain't it awful, ain't getting us anywhere. So maybe we ought to get our feet and our hands dirty and go and make a difference. And the church over the years has decided to go and feed the hungry, educate the, the uneducated, heal the sick, to walk with the broken. This is what the church does. This is what the church does over and over and over again. It's what we do. But you can't do it without courage. It's okay. I know you, dad stopped you from getting to the drums again. So sad. It takes courage to parent, doesn't it? It takes courage to say, your crying isn't going to kill me and I'll endure it, doesn't it? It takes courage to walk with people, to love, not knowing what's going to happen. As I said, for me, it takes courage to say, I, I need you. It takes that vulnerability. It's hard. We need each other, though. We need each other. And Christ in baptism has invited us to remember that we have God. We have one another. We are in this. And so we can have courage. We can have courage. As a church... I want to invite you to develop some courage. It's an exercise program. How many of you like exercise programs? A couple of you. Let's see how much you like this exercise program. So, every church I've been at, people have said they want to see their, their church grow. Is that something you all would agree with? You want to see your church grow? Every church I've been at, people have said they believe the world would be better if more people followed Jesus. Is that a statement you can agree with here? Yes. Okay. Average United Methodist. Skip United Methodist. Average Christian in America invites. Well, the number of people the average American invites could be counted on no hands. The math of that is zero, just in case you didn't catch it. No people. A few weeks ago, I had somebody from this church who said that they had invited somebody to come to worship with them. So they were above average just by that. And they said uh, that they were talking to them. Hey, you know, I'm doing this at the church. Would you, would you like to come? And they said, oh, I've been wanting to come to that church. Yeah, I, I don't have a church, so I'm, I'll, I, I think I'll come. And we were waiting outside. In the narthex before this service a few weeks ago, and the person didn't show up. The individual was just crestfallen, and they said, I, I guess they're not coming. And I said, that's okay. I said, it, it takes more than one invitation. Was that your first invitation to this person? He said, yeah. I said, okay, it takes more than one. Well, how many does it take? How many do you think it takes? Three? It depends on the person, but the average person, how many invitations do they need to come to church? Three, 10, 16, how about 100? And I don't say this as a guilt trip. I say this as an opportunity for courage for you to develop this week. I want to give you one simple thing to do this week. Pray for somebody in your world who doesn't have a spiritual home. 
that they would join you in following Jesus. Now, given that greater than 50% of our population has no spiritual home, and the number is really probably closer to 70% because the whole way they did the survey, if you don't know somebody, you know somebody who knows somebody. Pray for someone by name who doesn't have a spiritual home that they would follow Jesus with you. If you have been praying for somebody, then invite them to follow Jesus with you, right? If you're already doing this, then I invite you to the next step of courage. Invite them to follow with you. It might be that you watch later on Facebook together. It might be that they, they join you in doing daily office. It might be, but one way to join. There are so many different portals and, and doors into faith right now. Does that take courage? Yeah. Does praying take courage? Yeah, you know why? Because when you pray, God messes with you, just so you know. <laughs> there was some amens there. When you pray, God messes with you. So if you haven't been praying for somebody, pray for somebody. I have three neighbors who I'm praying for every single day. I, I will say I was, I've shifted one of my prayers because I found out they had a church. And so I just pray that they are fulfilled in their faith and they live it out. Right? But I've got three other neighbors who I don't know if they have a, a spiritual home and I'm praying for them and I'm praying for the opportunity to, to develop that relationship. Pray for somebody. If you've been praying, invite them. And how many invitations does it take? A hundred. Invite them to join you on daily office. Invite them somehow. Develop the courage like Peter and John had to say, you know what? There is salvation nowhere else. And by your courage and by your gentleness and by your love and by your patience and by your kindness, my hope and prayer is that those who you pray for and those you invite will know that you have been with Jesus. There is the chance they'll say no. Is that a failure? No. They know they're loved. And they know that you're with them. Especially even if after the no, you continue to love them and be gracious to them. It's what we're, we're called to be as a church. So, church, be encouraged. And the reason I ask you to do this over here is if you can develop some courage here in this thing. Remember when I asked you, what do you need courage for? Skills are translatable. If you exercise some courage here, you're stronger for the courage here. If you exercise it here in this aspect of your faith, you become stronger to exercise courage in the rest of your life so that you have the fullest life possible by God. My hope for you it's after you do this, you will want to do it more and more and more to have the fullest life possible in Christ. I want to see it for you. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, encourage your people. Give us strength. Give us courage to do that which we normally maybe don't do, to be vulnerable. Help us to have courage in the places where it really matters so that our life might be full and you might be glorified in us. We ask in the name of Jesus the Christ and all God's people said, Amen.
Thank you for being with me in this today. Please stand and sing as we celebrate the love of God that never ends for us. week and pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will turn his face to you and that God will give you peace. Go in the courage of Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be courageous this week, my people. Amen.